small battles and win the big wall. What's going on, his, hers, and theirs? What's up, guys? I'm your boy, Anthony. I'm Jamie. If you are new here, please do hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so that you can get all of our future videos. Here on our channel, we make family vlogs as well as talk about some controversial topics such as racial division, interracial dating and marriage, and the experiences of our interracial family. The goal here is simple, is to show people how through a little bit of help from God and some understanding for our fellow human beings, we can in fact all come together and live peacefully. Today, we are celebrating National Loving Day. We are. Can you feel the love? I can. Can, can you feel the, feel the love tonight? I, I feel the love. This afternoon? I, I feel the love every night. Uh, no. <laughs> don't go there <laughs> we are honestly super excited and very humbled and grateful to be talking about this today because I don't know if any of you are familiar with what National Loving Day is but if you're not and you watch this video you will be you will <laughs> National Loving Day is June 12th and it was on June 12th 1967 that the case for loving versus Virginia, Virginia versus the state of Virginia happened. National Loving Day is in celebration of Mildred and Richard Loving winning their case against the state of Virginia in the Supreme Court where they deemed it unconstitutional to ban marriage solely based on a person's race. They felt that it went directly against the 14th Amendment, which makes complete sense because you can't make those rights exclusive to just one thing. They're the, it's a broad sweeping amendment. So marriage would automatically be included in such an amendment. What this did was set a federal precedent of not allowing states to block people from getting married solely based on their race. It was a big step forward in this country period as far as race relations. We're gonna touch on a lot of stuff in this video and one of the things that I wanted to touch on right out of the gate, you know, there are, are a lot of things associated with interracial dating and marriage. And some of them I don't really agree with if I'm being honest, you know, there are a lot of people out there who exclusively date outside of their race and is to make more of a political statement than anything else. And in it's, our opinion, that is the wrong reason. That's the wrong reasons, you know? Richard and, and, and Mildred Loving, they weren't trying to make a statement. They just loved each other. As well as some of the other couples, the other interracial couples that we're going to mention in this video. You know, back when all of this first started, these people stood their ground not to make a statement, but because they loved each other. And, and they faced great persecution just for the chance to actually be with the person that they loved. We would not be sitting here today, married, able to live life peacefully with our children. And we are just very, very grateful for the sacrifices of those who came before us that paved the way for us to have the right to be in love and be married right and now. have a family yes uh, this is especially significant for us uh specifically due to our geographical location i'll give it to you this way 
It was only uh, about five years before I was born that Louisiana changed their law. And, and Alabama actually... Alabama only just repealed it 21 years ago. The year we got together... It's slave laws. It's really what it is. Yeah. It's designed... Uh, the, it, it was by design to keep colored people in invisible bondage. When they, you know, and everybody's aware of that, you know, when they took the chains off of our arms, they tried to put them on our brains. And one of the ways that they tried to do that was to prevent us from being able to mingle with other races. If you are in a situation where the person you love happens to be white and that person loves you back, you both face the punishment of death or long-term imprisonment just for wanting to be with each other. Think about the message that that sends to both parties. If no one ever stood up, if no one ever had the courage to say, this is wrong and it needs to be changed. If no one ever had the courage to fight, to get it changed, then relationships like my wife and I's don't happen in, in this day and age. You know, uh, not only that, but I could only imagine where race relations in this country might be right now if such laws had never been repealed. We're going to be talking about just some of the love stories of interracial couples and the challenges they face. It's just a day to celebrate and be grateful for us that those are the people that paved the way. The photos and images and even the information, we will cite all of our sources in the description and we encourage you to do your own research. If this is something that you're truly interested in, if this is something that you truly uh, want to know about, if this is something that you are a part of, if you are an interracial couple watching this video, I feel like this is something that you should definitely know about so that you can understand the people that came before you and paved the way for you to have the right to be in the relationship that you're in. Most definitely. The first couple we're gonna talk about is Frederick Douglass and Helen Pitts. I am a descendant of Frederick Douglass on my paternal grandmother's side. My grandmother's maiden name was Douglas. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Reverend Dr. Jesse Douglas is my uncle. You've all seen the picture of Martin Luther King Jr. marching and there's a, a person on either side of him and one of them appears to be a white man. That man is not white, he's albino, he's my uncle. I think uh, maybe I'll find that picture and and put it somewhere in here so you guys can know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I can. I can. Yeah. Put it in here. I come from a, a a long line of people who have fought for the rights of everyone, not just black people. Frederick Douglass. I am a descendant, and we're starting with him. He was a former slave who became a, a leader of the abolitionist movement. Uh, when his first wife passed away, he spent a solid year in mourning and grieving. And then he married uh, Helen Pitts, a white woman that he worked with. And was probably, in my mind, she was the one who comforted him and helped him get out of that depression. They were married in 1884. He was 66. She was 46. Nobody agreed with it. They, uh, his, his own children were very upset. His daughter-in-law even sued him. But for him, it was proof that he was not a hypocrite. You know, his first wife, his first wife was his mom's color and his second wife was his father's color. You know, Frederick Douglass himself was mixed. Helen Pitts has been quoted as saying, love came to me and I was not afraid to marry the man I loved because of his color. I don't think anyone should pass on love for something as minute as what color their skin is. Yeah, unimportant. You know, when you're talking about spending the rest of your life with a person, if you're excluding people based on that, 
you are honestly cutting yourself out of the chance at happiness. The next couple we're gonna talk about is Josephine Baker and John Leon. They were married in 1937. I'm sure a lot of you know who Josephine Baker is. She was an iconic jazz singer. And uh, apparently she had quite a few suitors <laughs> after her heart and her hand. She had been married twice before in the United States before her career took off. And it was said that Jean Leon was one of 15,000 marriage proposals that Baker claimed she received at this time in her life. Baker also hid war refugees at her home and conducted spy activities for the, resist for the resistance. This is in France during uh, World War II. Mm -hmm. Another fun fact about this couple is she was actually unable to have children. So they adopted 12 children of all different races and backgrounds and they called them the Rainbow Tribe. Yeah, you should look that up. There's more to that as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very interesting story. We're just gonna give you guys kind of a little snippet, but we are going to list our sources in the description and you guys can go research further and look up the names and get even more information. This. Most of these come from one site. There's a couple that we're going to mention at the end that come from another or a couple of other sites. But you can go deep into all of these stories much deeper than the little bit of information that we're uh, giving here. Uh, Josephine Baker, she, they made a movie about her. Yeah. The Josephine Baker story. Yeah. So that'd be a great place to start for, for this particular couple. Most definitely. So they called their children the Rainbow Tribe and over the next two decades, they heavily promoted them as symbols of racial unity. They're definitely one of the couples that paved the way. Um, and as we said before, the Loving versus Virginia did not happen until 1967. They married in 1937. So it was still illegal, but I think in the cases of well, she was world famous, so they spent a lot of time in Europe. Yeah, but they and did eventually, travel back before. Eventually, she moved and stayed in Europe because of how... Uh, she didn't want to be in the U.S. Well, anymore. and I mean, you can, you can put two and two together on why she didn't want to stay here. She was getting reviews from people that were overtly racist in the United States. And I think eventually decided that this was not the place for her. I don't blame her. No. But they definitely were one of those couples that still made a statement here, as well as elsewhere. This is one of my favorite ones right here. Surtees Kama and Ruth Williams. Surtees was a African prince and he got, he received his education in London. He fell in love with a white woman and they tried to take his country from him for doing so. Uh, it, it was, a, to me, a true story of, of triumph and overcoming because what this man did was nothing short of amazing. They stripped him of his title and tried to steal his country because he fell in love and married a white woman. So what he did was he created his own political party got voted in as president and took his country back. Which I think is phenomenal. Yes. Him and his wife met in 1947. They bonded over a shared love for music, particularly jazz, which uh, was probably the most popular type of music in 1947. When they got married, it was literally uh, an international incident. When he married his wife, Ruth, it was an international incident for the simple fact that Britain was the ruling nation of his home country. One of the main reasons for the level of controversy with this, with this couple is that he was due to rule that nation. And the example he was setting wasn't one that Britain once wanted set. And keep in mind his country at the, uh, was literally right next door to South Africa which openly engaged in apartheid. 
he received a overwhelming amount of tribal support from the people in his country. So when he formed a political party and overthrew the people that were in charge at the time, it was on the backing of the people that he was set to rule over. Uh, and they supported not only him, but his wife as well. And I, I feel like it's one of the more pertinent stories because of the high profile political aspect of it. Considering that politics is the main reason why these things were frowned upon in the first place. So to, for me, that was a worldwide victory for interracial relationships. Most definitely. Next couple is Pearl Bailey and Louis Belson. They were married in 1952. This is one of my personal favorites because they were one of the greatest power couples in music history. Not greatest interracial power couples, greatest power couples, period. And I just think that makes a very powerful statement. Agreed. There is definitely something to be said about overcoming the, the mental side of interracial dating. You know, uh, I think a lot of people are misinformed on what it's actually about. And don't get me wrong, like I said at the beginning, you know, there are those people out there who date outside the race to make a statement. It has nothing to do with them actually wanting to find the person that they love. They're, they're making a statement against whatever race it is they're choosing not to date in. Uh, for us, that was never the case, and for, for a lot of interracial couples, that's not the case. You'll find the ones that are together for the right reasons, they tend to make a difference in one way or another. Agreed. Bailey was the black Broadway and cabaret star whose career spanned six decades, and Belson was the world's greatest jazz drummer. And that's according to Duke Ellington, one of the world's greatest jazz musicians, period. And he was the only white member of Ellington's orchestra. And he became a band leader for the next five decades of his Hall of Fame career. Another reason this couple is one of my favorites is because it's not exactly, but it kind of mirrors our story. So we kind of, it was love at first sight for us. It was definitely love at first sight for these two. They married four days after they met. <laughs> That's love. But it stuck. Yeah. And they stayed together. And, you know, we met in high school. And I think everybody thought that it was kind of just a phase for both of us and that it wouldn't last. You know, puppy love, they're young. Well, they're going to go through it. many. They'll grow out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and so we didn't. No, we're still here. But they lasted, they were married for 37 years until Bailey's death in 1990. So they stuck it out. They adopted a son in the mid 1950s and had a daughter of their own a few years later. Bailey is, is quoted as saying, I walk with love and hope it rubs off. I really like that too. Amen. So yes, that the future couple the of the video. Yes. Mildred and Richard Loving. He was a, a construction worker. She was the daughter of a sharecropper. They lived next door to each other in a small, small town in Virginia. Honestly, to some degree, oblivious of the racial hatred that existed in the country. You know, it was real simple for them. Oh, I fell in love with the girl next door. We're gonna get married and have a bunch of children. <laughs> Our two videos this week are both going to be about all National, about the lovings. Yeah, National Loving Day. Um, so our next vlog that's coming out on Sunday, we're actually surprising our children. They don't really know what's happening. They know something is going on. We told them it was a surprise. We're gonna watch the Loving movie, mm -hmm. the movie about the Lovings, um, and we are going to have a bunch of links in the description if you want to get to know more about this couple. They have a lot of footage of them mm -hmm. at their home just talking and they were just a normal couple they weren't trying to make a statement they went to Washington to get married in order to sidestep the laws in Virginia 
They came back with a legitimate marriage license and still got arrested. Woke up in the middle of the night and taken to jail. They woke up to the sheriff literally standing on the side of the bed Telling Shining them to, a light in their eyes. Telling them to get up, come on, you're going to jail. They got to prison and they were offered two options. You can spend a year in jail and dissolve your marriage, or you can leave the state of Virginia for 25 years. So they left, honestly, mostly out of, of fear and not knowing what else they could even do. They moved to the to the black ghetto in Washington, and they they honestly suffered greatly. They were poor. It was hard to find work. They went back to Virginia to visit and got taken to jail again. Yeah. They went back to Washington. They were living there. The child who wasn't used to city streets got hit by a car. And that was it for Mildred. They wanted to move back home. They missed their family and friends. So Mildred contacted Secretary of State at the, at the time, Robert Kennedy. Yes. And Robert Kennedy passed their case to a, a very well known lawyer. Um, and he decided to take their case pro oh, bono. Wow. And they took it to court and they won. Well, first he had to appeal all of the, the decisions that had been made before about them being married in Virginia. Then he made it all the way to the, to the Supreme Court yeah. where he made the argument that you heard me talking about at the beginning of the video about how those laws were honestly their slave laws and they are in direct violation of the 14th Amendment. Yeah, they were married in 1958 and they didn't uh, win the win the case in the Supreme Court until 1967. So this was a long, drawn out battle that they had to fight for almost 10 years. It was nine years. Now, you imagine for one second, no matter what color you are, imagine for a second that you literally had to fight the law. You had to fight the government just to be with the person that you love. Now, I understand that there are places in the world where this is actually still going on right now. I realize that. But this is supposed to be America. Yeah. This is the supposed to the be free. the land of the free. That doesn't sound very free to me. Mildred was quoted as saying, you know, you lose some battles, but you win the war. They made a difference. And they are honestly probably the biggest part of why we're able to sit in front of you today without police knocking on our door or waking us up in the middle of the night. Uh, we don't take it for granted. It is greatly appreciated. It is. Thank you. One of these days, I pray that people will wake up and see the truth. You know, it's crazy how to some, the truth is apparent, but others are blind to it. Uh, be that intentionally or unintentionally, I struggle with that, I do, because I don't understand how it's so hard for people to see it, you know? And I, I credit my parents for that, I credit uh, my upbringing at the same time, I feel a certain sense of responsibility. Yes, and I was actually just about to say that too. You know, it would be nice if we could all just sit back and relax and live our lives and never have to say anything about anything, even if we see wrongdoing done. But that's not how things change. And all of these couples are very big examples of that. Bad people doing bad things has been happening since forever, you know? And as long as there are bad, evil people in the world, bad, evil things will continue to happen. The problem that I have is good people 
refusing to stand up and say or do anything about it. Yes. To me, that's almost more egregious. You know, when we first got together, we were kids in, hmm. in most senses of the word. You know, he was legally an adult, but we were both kids. He really didn't know what would come. He had no idea. But I think both of us were in a place where we knew if it did that we were going to do what was right. And so I think that's why we knew from pretty early on that we were going to stick it out and stay together. There are some days where we do wish that this wasn't such a big issue and the racial division in this country and all over the world wasn't what it is, but you know, it is. And we have to be willing to stand up and say something about it and make a difference in any way we can. And you know, these people, if, if I can say anything about them, it's that they're such a big inspiration to people like us. You don't have to have thousands of people saying something to make a difference. It really happens one person or two people at, at a time. time. This is honestly the best advice I could give to anybody who feels the same way that I do. You don't have to go out and try to change the world. Change your area, change your circle, change your surroundings, change the change your immediate, change the area that you can immediately impact. Just change that. You don't have to go out and try to change the whole world by yourself. But if you can change just one person that's in your orbit, you've done a good thing. Yes. The fact of the matter is, this stuff is diluted now, but it is not over with. You know, interracial couples still face these things today and it isn't right. Uh, to think that after everything that we've seen happen in this country, to think that after all of the fighting and the civil rights movement and Mildred and Richard Loving and all of these people who've fought for the chance, just for the chance to have a fair shake. And for equality. You know? No. To think that Today, in 2021, we still face some of these same issues in this country is appalling to me. To me, it would seem that we would have learned from our mistakes. It would seem that we would have woken up and realized that, that it's wrong. Yet, it's still happening on a regular basis. Uh, to that, I can only think of one reason why that would still be true and is that the hatred is being taught. The hatred is being passed down from generation to generation and people are being taught to hate this stuff. You know, no one is born with that hatred in their heart. They have to learn it. If we're not willing to stand up and teach love, it's never gonna change. People didn't define people by the color of their skin for thousands of years. This has only been a thing for what, what 300 four, years? 400, years, 400 at the years at the most. And before that, people were defined more by their class than the color of their skin. Which classism still exists. Yes. For the most part, even in the United States, classism has for the most part replaced racism. But racism is still going strong. Yes, but racism was invented. It was invented to separate us and it's working. Well, here's how it went. You know, poor white people and black people rose up against the elitist. And the plan that the elitist came up with was real simple. We make black people less than people and give poor white people the whip and let them rule over them. We get the money, poor white people get a little power, black people get screwed. But this was a made up thing. This is not a, this is not a natural thing that God intended not at to all. be. I don't wanna get that far into it because these are discussions that we want to have 
in some other videos talking specifically about things that happened in this country and how things came to be. But I think a lot of people don't know the history behind what exactly happened to create the society that we have today. It's and not pretty. No. That's why people don't know because they don't want to know because it's ugly. Yes. It's the biggest reason why nobody wants to talk about it is because of how ugly it is. Now, to me, logic says that if it's that ugly, why are we still doing it? If we keep doing the same thing over and over again, the same thing's going to keep on happening. And it's time we tried something different together. But that's going to do it, guys. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that notification bell. So you guys can get all of our future videos. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And as always, praise him in the morning, praise him in the evening, read your Bible often, and life is a very, very, very precious gift from God, so make sure you're taking full advantage and get out there and live it. Amen. Have a good one, his hers and theirs. Thank you. See y'all later.